I've spent thousands of dollars and years of my life trying to fix the number one flaw in my golf swing, which is a flipping move at impact. Every time I look at my swing on video, I get so frustrated because I see that flip move and I know that there's no way I'm gonna have good, clean impact every time I have that move. It makes your swing dependent on having perfect timing, which as we know is probably not going to happen most of the time. This can result in shots going way right or way left, and it's just not a great way to play golf. I've watched probably hundreds of YouTube videos about this. I've taken online lessons. I've worked with different instructors. I've bought every gadget you can possibly imagine to help me with this move. And yet, until yesterday, I've never really made any significant progress. It's been one of the most frustrating parts of trying to get better at golf because although I've worked really hard at it, I basically have had nothing to show for it until yesterday. My coach Ed gave me this lesson that finally had me making a breakthrough and having the best impact position that I've ever seen myself on camera for a full swing. He showed me a drill that I had never seen before on YouTube and it's making a huge difference in how well I'm striking the golf ball. In the lesson we recorded, he first goes over all the principles of how you're supposed to use your hands and arms in the golf swing, and then after watching me hit some balls, he showed me this drill which really has made a huge impact in my game. I'm usually the guy behind the camera, but this is part of a series where Ed's taking me from about a 20 handicap down to hopefully a scratch level someday, and we're gonna to try to document every part of the process so you guys can learn from it. We're talking today a little bit about how the wrists and hands are supposed to work in the golf swing. I think a lot of players like myself who are kind of amateur level, maybe we see a good drill like Ed likes to show about the takeaway here, and we can get to here, but there's a lot of confusing things on the internet about, well, what's supposed to happen here? Do we need to roll our hands open? Do we keep it more square? Do we need to keep the left wrist more flat? And so I think you can kind of give, give me a idea of what I'm supposed to be doing, including how much does my wrist need to hinge? All right, those are a lot of questions. Um, so we could talk for a long time, but the more you're aware as a player of having the club in the correct position and on the correct plane and having the club face square, it'll help answer some of those questions. So with a lot of my students, I have that question asked a lot, you know, I, that they just don't know where to go um, on their backswing. For the most part, I think golf instructors like myself have done a pretty good job of talking about positions. So if I'm parallel to the ground, I'm parallel to the target line's a correct position. Um, but I think what's lost in talking about positions um, is um, that we still have to make a swinging motion with the club. And so um, we can get hung up on positions and and it's kind of like paint by numbers, but you know where you got here, 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 and here, but there's no fluid movement. So what I like to tell people is that I, I love this drill to, to have a correct takeaway right at the beginning where the club's still between my arms and in front of me. But what happens from here is that this end of the club, uh, to be on the correct shaft angle, if I was driver, it'd be flatter, and if I'd be pitching wedge, it'd be steeper. To be, but to be on the correct shaft angle should point at your target line. And so really, once you can start this motion, if I can have a target line on the ground and from this L position here, if I can point at the line here, and I can point at the line again on my follow through by the time I'm in that position, you can start to feel what has to happen with the head of the club and with what the correct path and what the correct plane is. The other thing you ask about is what to do with my wrist. Um, and I've told you for a long time that one of my pet peeves is that instructors that try to get players with, with bowed or flat wrists um, is you have to be really careful with that, especially with good players, um, because it depends how you hold the club. Um, the more of a strong position for a right-hander with their left hand more on top of the club and the V pointed over here, if that wrist gets flat, my club face is gonna close. And so to learn what angle you should have for you is you can take your normal uh, grip position and hinge this club straight up. And for me, that means that I should have a little bit of an angle in my wrist when I'm back here in order to have a square club face at the top. 
So I'm really trying to swing on the correct path and to keep the face square the whole time. For slicers, you know, if you get this wrist in this position, it could eliminate your slice very quickly because that club face is in a very closed position. So it's very common for instructors to try to get people to feel this position back here. But I work with lots of good players um, and they tend to hook it more than slice it in most cases. And man, I see guys purposely trying to look like DJ back here and then they don't realize why their ball's hooking off the world and they're not hinging their hands correctly. The other thing is if I do this drill where I'm pointing at the target line with the butt end of the club, if my club face is square to dress and I keep it square in this part of my takeaway, when I hinge to point at my line, this club face is going to be perfectly square automatically in my swing. Does that help you? It does. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, one of the things I get confused about myself, and we've talked about this uh, before in our own private lessons, is the idea of, of kind of this motion where I get confused about my, my arm rotating versus um, the club face. Because I, I know we've, we don't want the club to roll open and close necessarily. And when I look at my own video sometimes, I... I tend to kind of, I've, flipping is my number one nemesis I've been trying to solve for a long time. Right. Um, so maybe just talk a little bit about how that, how is that supposed to work in, uh, particularly kind of in the, I guess, as you're from the top starting on your downswing? Yeah. Um, great question. Um, I, I do believe there's arm rotation uh, on the downswing. Um, and you need it in order to keep the club in front of us as our body starts to turn towards the target. And so um, I think most good players, once they're in a pretty good backswing position back here, um, if they don't move their arms and their hips at all and only move their arms, their golf swing is almost going to feel like this on the way down to where the knuckles of this top hand are rotating down. Um, it doesn't look like that when they swing because as their hips go forward and their chest goes forward, and I do that at the same time, it kind of blends that motion out. So I'm a big fan, you, you know, I can remember, you know, seeing Tiger do these drills. Corey Pavin used to do something almost pretty similar years ago when he was one of the best players in the world. And you'll see a lot of really good players exaggerate that move on the way down. As a right-handed player, you need to learn to do it with your left arm, though, because if you try to do it with your right arm, I think your shoulders will always go with it and they'll get open too soon. If I do it with my left arm, you can see I've got the leverage to be able to keep my chest pointed backwards and do that at the same time. So I'm a big fan of feeling that motion. Now that being said, when I exaggerate that motion, you can see this club's pointed nowhere near the target line. So in an, in an actual swing, I'm still going to be at the target line. Um, this end of the club should actually point at the target line three or four feet out in front of the ball before I hit it. If that happens, I can never flip. I'm always going to have lag. Whenever I flip too early, this end of the club leaves that target line really soon. So one of the drills that I like at home is you can choke down on a club and you can feel, have a target line out here in front of you and feel this butt end of the club pointing way out in front of the ball but still on the target line. And that'll really give you the lag that you're working, looking for. The other thing is this. Um, Patrick's pretty common where he tends to be at impact and his hands are like this. I'm exaggerating. He's obviously not in that bad of a position, but he tends to flip. Well, the flipping is not what's wrong. Something has to cause you to flip. Your subconscious is really smart, so it knows it has to flip. And so what causes that flip is being too steep at the beginning on the way down. And once a player's too steep here on the way down, if they maintain an angle and they don't flip, 
they're literally going to swing over the top of the ball and bottom out in front of it. Well, our brain's really smart. I start that position. Well, the only way I can get the club head on the ground is to flip early, and then that'll lower that club head to where at least I can make contact. Um, and that's the cause of the flip on the way down. So I see some people talk about when you're at the top, having that feeling like that lowering with your arms, is that a good way to work on that type of thing? Like how, how do you want to go about getting more flat? Well, that for some people that really works. Um, however, I would tell you, my experience is that not many people can feel that and, and, and it's not effective. Um, in theory, I think it's a pretty good feeling and with good players, if you trace their hand line on a video, you'll see that hand line just goes straight down as they start. It never goes that way. And so, is that a good feeling? Yes. Um, however, um, the other way some people try to feel it is kind of the same thing as they try to feel like they're pulling down. Well, the reason that doesn't work for most people is because we still have to have a swinging motion with the club head. And whenever I pull, I'm really not swinging the head of the club very well, and it's really lagging behind, and it's pretty easy to get stuck down here at the bottom and, and not hit very good shots. Um, I prefer a couple of other drills to learn to feel it. Um, if you'll notice, sometimes it's incorrect weight transfer or incorrect footwork maybe is another way to do it or talk about it. Um, as I start back here in my backswing, most good players start shifting this weight forward before they get to the top of their swing. And when they transfer this weight, if I pick this foot up and put it down, you will see that this club just naturally flattens. It'll never go that way as I make that motion. Uh, gosh, it was one of Harvey Pinnock's uh, Little Red Book chapters was to do this drill to pick this foot up and put it down and feel that club drop and so instructors have been talking about this transition for years um, but that's a really good one um, the other thing I like is to swing right one-handed so if I just hold on with my trail arm right arm for me um, and I swing forward uh, you'll see that this club goes this way on the way down every time almost it's almost impossible to go that way with one arm and so it's a pretty good way to learn to feel it is one armed that way too and i would recommend it and then the other thing is literally what i talked about earlier once you're up here try to feel like this points at the target line is going to point at the ball for a split second it's going to point out here on the target line in front of the ball and i'm going to point at the target line on my finish as well I would still like to go back to that. Patrick's really improved his takeaway here in the last few weeks. Um, just kind of showing what you used to do going back. You used to rotate going back. <laughs> more, more of this kind of. Yep, exactly. That, which, which is funny because now when I go to the driving range, I, I can watch almost everyone doing that first move, and it's like incorrectly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. And so, yeah, I agree. And so show the drill that you used that helped you the most to correct This is that. probably the, the number one is doing this type of a move where you showed me you put your hand on the other side. Yep. And just get that first few feet like that. Uh, the other thing we've talked about a little bit before is um, using the heel of the club to kind of have that same feel where it's like instead of leading with the toe, you're trying to lead more and kind of exaggerate with the, the heel like that. That's correct. And with his old takeaway, once that club went back behind him on the way down, then the only thing that was left for him to do was to come over it, be too steep on the way down. Yep. And then he'd flip to make up for the steepness. And uh, so he was doing like three things wrong. But <laughs> um, frankly, it's if you do the takeaway right at the beginning, it, you know, it, it creates a chain reaction that mm -hmm. hopefully is correct rather than incorrect. So. Good. And that's a nice little draw. And mm -hmm. A year ago, he couldn't have hit that shot. Is that right? Yeah. My uh, Lately, my irons tend to draw sometimes more than I want, and I'll end up kind of hitting more of a hook. And my driver, I still can fight a little bit of a fade, but it's it's 
been pretty under control lately. Uh, with that takeaway, has really been helping. Yep, I agree. One more to the right on that one. It's okay. He's first two shots of the day, so he's not <laughs> loose. So he's actually doing quite well. I feel like I'm getting the club a little behind me on those, you those are. first two. Just a little. One of the things I want you to think about here for me is sure. same ball position. Okay. They'll be able to see from this view over here that's pretty good ball position. It's right off these Nike swoosh here. And, um, um, and I like that uh, uh, for Patrick a lot. And so uh, with a mid iron here, he doesn't have a very wide stance. With driver, that back foot would get wider and that would have make the ball position appear farther forward, but it really hadn't changed. It's still right here, yeah. there on one. So that, that's one really good way to talk about ball position. What I'd like him to think about on this next swing is, go ahead and put the club head in front of the ball here. If I hold an alignment stick right here off your watch, mm -hmm. as you would come forward, I want that club to go underneath that. Okay. So that's what I want you to think. So. Um, Have your, I been your going good more? shots, it's doing that. The shots that are tending to go right, you would be coming up too high and you'd be more hitting. this, okay. Yeah, and you yeah, would yeah. hit this shaft on the way. More like, like that. that. Okay, interesting. And so I wanted to go under. Okay. So just pretend like I'm holding that alignment stick there and go ahead and hit one for me. Okay. Good. Do it again. Mm-hmm. That motion felt a little different. Good. I like it. So do it. Do it again. And you're going to do it with your arms and not your hands. If you do it with your hands too much, you'll hook it doing that. But okay. Just do it with. Feel like your arm swing and body turn swinging under that alignment stick. See, that should have felt really good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I can tell. I can feel in my like my abs use are used more in that swing. Yeah. Good. Well, yeah. it should be You're right. So that was great. So. Just keep doing that. Awesome. That was the best feeling hit I've had in a while. Yeah, that, that was, was good. good. I can hear the sound. Yeah, think. that felt awesome. That was great. Go ahead and set up a practice swing for me. Okay. So I like alignment sticks a lot. Um, I like I can hold one just above his wrist angle here. And so as he would go back, he'd be just under it. Yep, go ahead to the top. And then on the way down, he would be under it. Good. And then he's got to add that next one where he's got to be under this one on the way through. So pretty good thoughts um, with alignment sticks. You can have a buddy hold an alignment stick on the back swing and the forward swing and feel that. Isn't that good? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I feel like I'm getting a, a different motion in my midsection than I ever you have are. in the swing. And then you don't early extend yeah. when you swing over there. Do you see that? Yeah. For those of you at home watching, just go ahead and set with the club up in front. So one of the things I've always done with young players, 12, 13, 14 year olds that are good players, I said, just pretend I'm right here with a baseball glove and that head of that club should hit my hand right here after you hit mm. the ball. And so I don't really want the focus on the ball, Patrick. I want the focus right here. Yeah. I want you to hit here. Okay. This, is, this is our target. Where the ball just gets in the way. Sure. That's a really good visual. Yep. And that really helps for those of you who got kids at home. Um, that's really, really a good visual and a good image. Isn't that good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's three in a row. Those are the best feeling iron shots I've hit in a long time. Yeah, good. Yep, that's awesome. And I think this position, go ahead and, I'm, and set up in front of the ball again. And then as you come forward to here, man, if you watch tour players, they always swing the club over to here. I say always, Phil Mickelson doesn't, but most of the guys do. And, uh, and Phil would be better if he did. But they swing it over here and most amateurs, instead of being in that position, 
they're in this position yeah. when they get to parallel to the ground. It feels more familiar. Yes, and you, it's yeah. a flip, and you can see from mm -hmm. the back view the, the end of the grip here. See, if you come forward to here, see, now you can no longer see the club because these bodies in the way, mm -hmm. and it's parallel to the ground off of your heel line, yeah. like I've talked about in a couple other videos. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. Yep. That's a very different feel than I'm used to. Yep, good. It needs to be. That's yeah, what you need that's, to feel. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's four <laughs> or five in a row. Perfect. That's awesome. Does I feel like I, the compression on the ball is night and day different. It is. Yeah. It is night and day difference because you're used to you're used to being like this mm -hmm. throwing the club away, and now you've got four yeah. shaft lean that's and the awesome. club swinging correctly. So. That's pretty awesome. And the other thing for most players, um, they'll, you'll find it eliminate the shot to the right. Yeah, it, all of those have been slight yes. little draws left. I know, yeah. and so that's a secret to golf is just having one miss, not two. Yep. And, uh, if we can eliminate the right side of the golf course, uh, your scores will improve greatly. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, do you want that same feel with every club, driver, yes. all the way down to your short yeah. irons? Yes, okay. even chipping and pitching. Really, okay. Yes. That's where the club belongs on the way through. Interesting. And I like that having a forward swing thought um, rather than an impact thought. Yeah. So, I think impact's important, don't get me wrong. Um, but I find, in my opinion, you, if you're thinking about an impact position, unless you're really a good player, and I mean elite level player, um, I just don't think you get a, enough of a swinging motion mm -hmm. and enough of a, an acceleration through the ball. Well, we've talked before about how if you use those impact bags and stuff, you can kind of get like a, a hitty yeah. action towards it. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm not a fan of impact bags. Mm -hmm. um, um, I have one in my simulator room and it's pretty dusty. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'd tell you. Cool. Uh, I use it on occasion, but I'm not a fan of it overall. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Um, the other thing um, that I would tell you, um, Two is the reason I like that follow through thought is that I think the hardest part of golf is that the ball's not moving. Mm -hmm. And so we have like an unlimited amount of time to think about what to do and what not to do. Sure. And so, and I think too many people worry about the golf ball. And I think the more you worry about where you're going rather than the ball, mm -hmm. I think you'll have, you'll, you'll have more success, yeah. especially on a golf course. 